on his own. Two of the 27 injured, one was an infant with broken bones, and another sustained injuries trying to escape the scene. The breakdown of fatalities as far as the deceased, we have one German, 13 U.S. citizens, one undetermined, and seven Mexican nationals. With that, I, I'll ask uh, you all to provide any questions that you have. Oh, I'm sorry. Mario. Thank you, Greg. <clears throat> My name is Mario D'Agostino. It's D apostrophe A G O S T I N O. I'm the fire chief here in El Paso, Texas. I wanted to give a brief of how we've been handling the uh, family reunification, the notifications. So we, we set up early Saturday a family re reunification center. That's been operational since then, around the clock. We'll be transitioning the next day to a family assistance center. That center will be open for the next 10 to 12 days before we do our final transition. That final transition will take us into an alarm, a long-term recovery. It'll be the El Paso Strong Resiliency Center, and it'll be open as long as we need it to be open for our community. We encourage any of the public, any of those involved, anyone who needs any help to call to get that help they need first. Don't let the mental health issues build up on you. Don't let the, the thoughts, everything that's concerning you, don't let it get you, get to you. Reach out, we have a number, 779-1800. That'll get you the help you need locally, and there's no charge to that service. Thank you. I tried to preempt your question with my remarks. I represent the office of the mayor of El Paso, Texas. This is not a political visit as he had before, which I did not visit with him, but I was uh, noted from the podium, as I recall. And, uh, and he is the president of the United States. So in that capacity, I will fulfill my obligations as mayor of El Paso to meet with the president and discuss whatever our needs are in this community and hope that if uh, we are expressing specifics that we can get him to come through for us. Um, I'm already getting the emails and the phone calls and that's why I'm saying what I'm saying now. Um, I would appreciate if people would save their uh, time and not necessarily have to send them. Yes, I understand, but we're not dealing with that right now. We're dealing with a tragedy of 22 people who have perished by an evil, hateful act of a white supremacist, supremacist that has no bearing or belong in El Paso. It was not done by an El Pasoan. No El Pasoan would ever do this, and I can't, I don't know how we deal with evil. I don't have a textbook for dealing with evil other than the Bible. I'm sorry. I, I, we're going to go through this, but he, but uh, the president is coming out, and I will meet with the president, and uh, I guess for people who have lots of time on their hands, I'll deal with their emails and their phone calls. I can't go into those details right now. That would be too revealing of the investigation that's still ongoing. Right now, we haven't even clean, uh, fully cleared the crime scene there was still gathering evidence at that particular location. I'm sorry? It was bought in uh, near his hometown in Allen, Texas. I don't have the exact details of that right now. It'll, the, the weapon was purchased legally. It's a 7.62 caliber weapon. That could be two varieties of weapons, 7.62 by 51, which is a NATO round. 7.62 by 39 would be uh, Rush, uh, Russian Kalashnikov caliber. The, the what? 
well, you'll have to contact our PI. Well, our PIOs will provide that information, but they'll have to clear it with the investigative unit right now to see if that's permissible. Uh, right now, he has no bond. He's under a charge of capital murder in general. Uh, that, that determination is clear by the district attorney's office. They work with the investigators to come up with the appropriate charge. If that's the case, then it was approved by the district attorney. From the police department perspective, we're doing okay. We have uh, employee assistance programs available. EHN is also assisting with that, and I'll let the fire department comment on that side. Yes, thank you. Um, the fire department we have, we did set up debriefing teams instantly, immediately following the scene. We do have EH, EAP assisting them as well. We do have our international firefighters. They're coming on scene next week. They'll be doing debriefing, going station to station, talking to them, seeing if there's any effects. We've had all the positive communications with them, and we are monitoring them. I can, I can give you a general. He uh, took about 10 to 11 hours traveling from Allen, Texas to El Paso. As soon as he got here, he uh, was lost in the neighborhood. After that, he found his way to the Walmart because we understand he was hungry, and that's about as far as I can go without getting into too much detail. Did you cooperate? Was he cooperating? Yes. yes, he cooperated from the beginning. None of this had to be any way coerced from him or threats or anything like that. He volunteered most of the evidence that we we're able to utilize at this time. No, he, I can't make comment on that directly. Uh, again, uh, that's part of the investigation. Uh, that, that's a good question because I see it's eight on one of my uh, fact li list here, but I've got seven on the list we'll be providing to you. So right now it looks like seven confirmed from the list with the deceased actually on it. I'm sorry? No, not to the investigators. I asked that question again this morning. Right now he... Uh, basically it appears to be in a state of shock and confusion. I'm sorry? We don't know that right now. Thank you all. I'm sorry, would you mind repeating? No, we haven't ascertained that right now. Uh, that's what we suspect he did right now. Thank you.